Is this Cassie's house? Nope, it's just a random citizen. Oh, that's Cassie's house. A tense silence hangs over the house. Cassie, your tiefling friend, emerges from the shadows, but her eyes are staring into the distance. She seems to look right past you. No, not now! The turmoil is suddenly over, but you see fear in Cassie's eyes. Her blue eyes. It's you! I wanted to say... I... Please don't be afraid! You can tell me the truth. What's going on? The girl closes her eyes and clenches her fist. Obviously in the grip of a strong emotion, but not one you can read. I knew it couldn't last forever. Why did he... Why did he even make this rule if he knew it would be impossible to keep? What? She takes a deep breath, opens her eyes, and speaks with firm resolve. Come what may, you should know, Thork and Iron Rue, that the last person you know... That the person you know by the name of Cassie does not exist. My real name is Kalik, and I... We... Well, it's a long story. And such stories are better told beside a welcoming fire. Will you hear me out? Fine, let's go. Kalik. The girl rests her head on her arm and stares off into the distance, lost in memory. Stories by the fire, in the desert where I was born. My fondest memory. When the day is done, hosts and guests, parents and children, friends and rivals, all gather by the fire under the stars to tell their tales. All they did, all they witnessed, all they heard from other travelers, and they whisper and the whispers carried by the desert wind. My sister and I often snuck in to hear these stories, hiding in the shadows just beyond the circle of light and warmth. We are hellspawn, you see. Tieflings are unwelcome guests in Kadira. Unblessed by the light of merciful serenry. Serenry. We grew up sleeping in a common tent, scavenging food here and there like orphans, but all outcast and disowned. All but outcast and disowned. We were thirteen when we left and set off to find happiness in the cities, and everyone we left behind sighed with relief. My sister and I, we are twins, but as different as the sun and moon. Her name is Canera, which means silent flame. She is fire, a cold fire, but one that burns everything to ash. I am a river. It brings me joy to give water to tired travelers and nurture green shoots. But when I flood, I am bound to bring death. The girl's eyes are full of sorrow. Despite our differences, we are one. Our lives belong to the di to divine Nethys, and by his mercy we now live in turns. While one of us is here, the other sleeps in another plane, and when she wakes up, we switch places. Just as you just witnessed. Hmm. And how is it you began to live in turns? Kalik lowers her head. This story, it's one I've never told to anyone before. Not one in the whole world. And it's not easy to confide in a stranger. There's too much grief and guilt in it. If you don't mind, I'd rather not go into all the details. You see, my sister died, and I couldn't get over it. Canera was killed by a soul eater, a monster summoned by secret followers of Abaddon's archdemons. Those who summoned him died in the fight, but the beast was too strong for my sister. And I wasn't even there to protect her. Kalik catches her breath. I... I... We just had a fight. And we both did some stupid things just before, but I don't want to talk about that now. When I found out what happened to my sister, I was ready to make a deal with any power, if only I could get her back. And I found such a power. I was contacted by the Arcanothane, the herald of the god Nethys himself. She promised she would return Canera to life, but on two conditions. First, we must both keep the, the arrangement a secret. Second, we would never be able to meet again. And so our new life began. Now we flee through the world, guarding our secret, always introducing ourselves as Cassie to hide that there are two of us. And we switch places with each other at random. While one lives, the other sleeps in a, in a demiplane, one specifically created for us. And you can't control these switches? No, we can't. They happen at random, most often when we're sleeping. But sometimes in broad daylight, that's when we can never stay in one place for long. 
when someone witnesses us switch. Or that's why we can never stay in one place for long. When someone witnesses us switch, we usually tell them tales of a special magical way of traveling. But people start noticing strange things and begin to figure things out. Truth be told, I'm so tired of having to pretend. We knew this couldn't last forever. And now the truth is finally out. Ah, oh, what is the point in all this? What can I do to help? That's actually what I wanted to talk to you about. Canero was supposed to tell you of an ancient treasury that we've been looking for. Gold isn't the only thing of value in this place. It may contain an ancient relic taken by the Taldan raiders from a respected Kadiran temple of Nethys. It's an unusual relic called the Disk of the Eclipse. I once heard a beautiful story that it was created from the shadow that hides the sun and the moon. But I don't think that could be the truth. Nethys is the god of magic, who was once a mortal wizard, and relics from his temple are usually very powerful. There are many among his followers that, who think that solving the mysteries of magic, even rivaling their deity, is the best way to serve him. One such follower created the disc long ago in the distant past. According to legend, it gave its owner uh, control over the planar travel, but only pairs of wizards bound by unbreakable ties could use it. While one of them traveled the plains, the other was his anchor in our world, and they could switch between. Do you see now why we so desperately wish to find the disc? It might help us understand how the switch between me and Kaneda works. And it should make our divine patron happy. Nethys and his assistants value the desire to understand the mysteries of magic above all else. And how did this disc come to be in the Stolen Lands? It was brought here by Taldans from the Fifth Army of Exploration. Taldor and Kadira were enemies for ages. Thousands of years ago, a soldier broke into the Temple of Nethys and stole the relic to sell it or secretly hoard it as an heirloom. Hundreds of years later, his own kin, or the kin of the, its hundredth buyer, brought the disc to these strange lands. When the Taldans had come, uninvited as usual, and which they finally vanished from the little- what? From with little- oh, and which they finally vanished from with little trace. That was fucking hard to read. Sometimes history is as intricate as lace. You'd never guess where it begins and where it ends. Tell me the location of the treasury. It was called Sorrowflow in the chronicle we read. It was once a Talden town founded by the veterans of the Fifth Army of Exploration. It stood on the shores of a turbulent river and that was what destroyed it. One night a terrible flood devastated the settlement, killing many and driving the rest to flee. Only the tower on the cliff remained, which was too high for the flood to reach. Water covered the ruins for a long time, but last year it receded. My friends found a chronicle which recounted the destruction of the city, and spoke of the disk of the eclipse which was kept there. They managed to track down the ruins, but we were frightened away, but were frightened away by the man monsters, monsters and beasts that roamed the area. If this can help, then I agree. Talik's sad eyes get a little warmer. Thank you. I will wait for you there at Sorrowflow, and please, let's explore the ruins together, just the two of us. I don't want to give myself away again in front of your companions. Breaking the Arcanothane's conditions once was enough. I have no wish to anger our god. So long! Cool. Tiefling lady is cool. I like her. Thank mm -hmm. you.